all over the world, Reverend Dr. Hermann Gundert may be known as the grandfather of the Nobel laureate and German writer Hermann Hesse. But in South India, most people know Hesse as the grandson of Hermann Gundert. Hermann Hesse, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1946, referred to Gundert as his Indian grandfather, who was a source of great fascination and exerted an influence that is not to be underestimated. Reverend Dr. Hermann Gundert, a German missionary, scholar and linguist from Kalfa, Germany, came to India as a Christian missionary, but was destined for more than that. It was the conquering of the souls of Indian languages, especially that of Malayalam, that he excelled in. From publishing Kerala's first newspaper, to writing the first important grammar of Malayalam, to introducing punctuation marks for the first time in the Malayalam language, and a groundbreaking Malayalam to English dictionary, which is still in use today. Now, one century and a quarter after his demise, the legacy of Hermann Gundert as a visionary linguist to whom the language and culture of Malayalam are immeasurably indebted shines brightly. This sprawling colonial bungalow, now a museum, at Illikunna Hill in Talasheri, Kerala, with its impressive structure, surrounded by verandas on all four sides, was once the home of a German missionary, scholar and linguist, Hermann Gundert. Gundert, who lived here for 20 years from 1839, is revered in Kerala for his pioneering contribution to the Malayalam language and literature. Dr. Hermann Gundert is Malayala Bhashida Adhyate Ambassador and Anna Vishesh Pitra. Adhyatinde Malay Adhyam Malayala Bhashikum Kerala Samskaratan Algatula Sambhavanagare Valare Amulyaman. Though he had come to Thalasheri to spread Christianity, he spent more time learning the local language and culture. Vasadale Randarti Pandranda November on the Nana Tunjatar Tachan Malayala Sarvasala. In the the it was in Stuttgart city, in Baden-Württemberg, that Hermann Gundert was born on the 14th of February, 1814, to Ludwig Gundert and Christiana Enslin. Both parents were of the arduous Christian faith. Starting his education at the nearby Latin school, little Guntert too was getting a vigorous exposure to the Christian faith from his parents and by his frequent visits to Bible Society offices. It is reckoned that the later interest of Guntert for India too emerged from pursuing the Mission magazine which contained much news about India. The primary education was followed by secondary education at the seminary in Malbrunn. Here, his passion for learning languages and translations too got a fillip. Actually, at Malbrunn, it was a kind of high school education. He reached over there at the, at the age of 13. There, he could uh, get exposed with the languages like uh, Hebrew, Greek, Latin, English, and many other languages. So the classical languages he got acquainted at Melbourne. And he started translating at the age of 16, uh, there itself, some parts of Bible, from directly from Hebrew to German. And there also, he had established his, uh, you know, flavor of language and his uh, style-making traditions. 
In 1831, Gundert gained admission to the famous Tübingen University, which dates back to 1477. With a library consisting of several lakhs of volumes, including rare classical books, several printing presses nearby, and a specialization in theology, philosophy, Indology, and medical science, Tübingen was a luminous center of scholarship. Certainly, it was a place which helped Gundert progress on his path of classical learning, especially regarding languages. Most of the universities were concerned about religious studies, whether it is Oxford, Cambridge and all that. Later on, they switched over to secular knowledge. And then they had different, different uh, branches of knowledge like dictionary making, writing grammars in new languages and all that. Gundert had a good training in dictionary making, good training in grammar making as far uh, as the knowledge uh, of different languages of the world were known to German people during those times. And he was also a gifted linguist in a sense that he wanted to uh, learn new languages, wanted to learn differences between languages, wanted to le I mean, learn the art of dictionary making. It's an art as well as a science. By the end of his education in Tübingen, where he secured a doctoral degree in philology, with a specialty in Sanskrit, came a turning point for him when he visited Basel Mission a Protestant mission with its headquarters in Switzerland. Here, he was selected for the post of a tutor for teaching the two children of an evangelist in Calcutta. As part of the trip to India, he had to visit London and here he mastered Bengali and Hindustani within a short period. For several foreign Christian missionaries in India during the British rule, with a view to spreading Christianity in the subcontinent, learning Indian languages became a necessity. Though the name missionary linguistics came into being only by the end of last century, it was there throughout because missionaries were engaged in preserving the language, preserving the language of the old, their ritual, their religious texts, they were concerned about spreading the religion, whether it is Christian or, before that, even Buddhist. Though their mission of converting the natives to Christianity did not give the expected results, one thing that took them by surprise was the beauty of the ancient Indian languages and their advanced grammar, structure, syntax, verb declension, etc., which in no way were inferior to Western languages. There was a change in their perspective of Indian people and their intellectual achievement in the land that was the cradle of one of the oldest civilizations in the world. Though Reverend Dr. Hermann Gundert was one among them, he was destined for more than that. Hermann Gundert uh, to be assessed in a different way. First of all, he has to be assessed in the context of missionary orientalism. And the second time, uh, as a linguist, he was a, not only a scholar and a visionary too, because, and even in the proselytization or evangelization process, what he has designed, it was apart from the rest of the cultures, of missionary cultures, he followed the way of nativizing or localizing the culture, it means Christianity to the people. But his planned program is implemented in a different way. In the spring of 1836, Hermann Gundert, a 22-year-old German scholar, boarded a ship that was to set sail from Britain to Calcutta. Today, settling down for even a nine-hour flight requires keeping some reading material aside, perhaps a book or two. For Hermann Gundert, traveling to Calcutta from Bristol in the 1830s, the journey time took nine months. So, instead of just reading books, he decided to pick up languages. During that travel, uh, he taught three ladies Bengali and two gents uh, about uh, Hindustani. And by the time, one of uh, uh, another fellow traveler who taught him Telugu. 
His journey to Kerala began with a change in his plan as soon as his ship reached India. Gundat chose to settle down in Madras instead of going to Calcutta. While travelling to various places in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh with his evangelical duties, Gundat was also engaged in mastering Dravidian languages like Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, etc. Normally a missionary his main purpose is to translate Bible into a local tongue. This is what. For that there was no, not required this much of energy to understand the genius of a language. But Gundat, rather on the other hand, following Joseph Bhatshi, he followed the tradition of that uh, integrating, understanding cultures and identifying with the cultures. During his sojourn in Andhra, Gundat entered another important phase of his life by marrying Julie, a French-speaking missionary from Switzerland. After marriage, they were invited to join the Basel mission in Mangalore. As part of his missionary work in Mangalore, a chance trip to Trivandrum or Tiruvanandapuram got him to have an audience with His Highness Sri Swati Tirunal, a scholar and the ruler of Travancore. Most probably, it was here he heard Malayalam for the first time. This musical language that used a lot of Sanskrit and Tamil words attracted Guntert very much. And not only did he learn this language, but also became an authority in a short span of time. By a series of fortuitous events, the Guntert couple reached Thalasheri in April 1839 and began anchoring their life at a bungalow on Ilikun Hills, which earlier belonged to an English missionary who bequeathed it to Basel Mission. This Ilikunu Bangalore, that's today called as uh, Gundat's Bangalore, that was owned by another justice or somebody, and who really wanted to start missionary works in Talisheri area. But he failed because even CMS and other groups couldn't establish a kind of missionary over there. Then he offered that building to the Basel mission. So the, then automatically Basel mission asked uh, Gundat to go and uh, take over the building, and he stayed over there and then he started learning Malayalam. Thus started an important epoch in the life of Guntert and also for the Malayalam language. Over the next 20 years, till his final return to Germany in 1859, it was at Talasheri and at Chirakal, both in present-day Kannur district, that Guntert mostly carried out both his missionary and literary activities. People were always thinking to impose English to the local subjects, but rather script tradition is the dominant culture of Europe. The script is centric, not the speech centric or the phonocentric traditions gave or the orality got any kind of recognition at that point of time. So Gundat on the other hand implemented over here and practiced over here that the people's language is important than the scriptural traditions. Reverend Guntert was among the pioneers who made educational facilities available for the people of Malabar. The takeover of the by then dysfunctional English free school founded by CMS missionaries at Talasheri was the first step in this regard. On the 14th of May 1839, Guntert started a school that taught in Malayalam in Talasheri with 12 students. He had set up a Malayalam school at his own bungalow at Illikunna and later at Kaderur. He was also able to teach children from all religious groups. When Guntat was concentrating on learning, teaching and writing Malayalam, his wife, Julie, established the first female day school at Talasheri in 1840. These kinds of activities provided ample opportunities for Gunter to get acquainted with the local culture, societal systems and language traditions. It was during his stay in Talasheri that he published 13 books in Malayalam, including a translation of the Bible. One of Gunter's main aims in India was to spread Christianity. And although his interests were divulged in many ways, he did make a contribution to Christianity in Kerala by publishing 
Paranchola Mala in 1845, a collection of Christian theological idioms in Malayalam. In addition, he became active in translating the Old Testament from Hebrew and the New Testament from Greek into Malayalam. The parts of the Bibles he had translated directly because most of the Bible translation at this point of time it was it was secondary. Now, interlingual translation means from English to Malayalam. But he said, no, this is wrong. One has to follow. Uh, Bible from the source itself means the original source. That is why he followed uh, Greek sources and uh, um, Hebrew sources, and also the poetic elements which he had integrated in a very comfortable way uh, as far as the Old Testament is concerned. That is why his Bible is valued literally very high. It was over a long period that he finished the entire work, which came out in Malayalam as several little volumes at frequent intervals. He had translated the Bible in the sense by integrating the classical words as well as the people's words. In that way, the scriptural and phonic tradition has been integrated, and he translated. And he had given more emphasis on the poetic or aestheticization of language and all kinds of uh, songs. He had uh, translated comfortably for the people. The publication of Rajya Samacharam and Paschimodayam, the first Malayalam newspaper that proved to be a turning point in the Malayalam journalistic field, marked another high point for Guntard during his stay in Talasheri. One periodical he had utilized for totally conveying or propagating Christian ideas or Christianity and that sense. The other. He had a wonderful plan of Pashimudim that uh, the plan was that he understood that, okay, this area has its own knowledge traditions, but yet it required some kind of you know, subsidization, that it required a kind of Western knowledge methodologies. Because most of the Indian traditions, Indian uh, knowledge systems were actually transferring through poetic verses. So at that point of time, the people were so happy to get this uh, prose and he tried to convince the people and the way in which he wants to make a public sphere and a reading public. It's a kind of making or sculpting a reading public for Kerala. In 1849, Samuel Habik, the head of Malabar Basel Mission, invited Gunther to come to Chiragal and resume his missionary duties there. Though both Gundert and Julie had much reluctance in leaving Talasheri, to which they had much endeared themselves, they could not refuse this request. Anyway, with mission authorities agreeing to Julie to set up a girls' institute at Chiragal, as in Illikunna, the couple began their new stint in earnest. Gunter's incessant independent stance later resulted in a transfer to Mangalore, much against his wishes. After a short while, he shifted to the post of school inspector for the entire Malabar region. The hectic and frequent travels from Mangalore to other areas greatly affected his health and he became much weaker. But making school texts in Malayalam with a mix of poetry and prose could be seen as one of his rewarding works during this period. It was the first time Malayalam prose was thus being encouraged in pedagogy here. Another monumental work of Guntert for which Malayalam owes much to him is the book Malayala Bhasha Vyakaranam, Malayalam Language Grammar. At the time when Guntert was writing his grammar for Malayalam language, no grammar of Malayalam language was clearly known to him or to the people then. It was really some other grammatical texts were written before him. So uh, he as well as uh, those who read his grammar were under the impression that his was probably is the first complete grammar of Malayalam language. Though it is not correct, in a way it is correct because he is concerned about uh, the language as it is used as such. This is not for the use of ordinary native speaker nor for teaching Malayalam through English. This is to reconstruct the history. Because in 19th century, especially in Germany, historical method was considered to be the scientific method. 
so he is uh, concerned about history but in addition to that he gives you a complete record of what is uh, what is what in malayalam language during his period as well so in a way uh, synchronic analysis also can be benefited by his book perhaps the true value of this work could be the best learned from the words of ar raja raja varma the author of kerala paniniyam considered to be the definitive grammar volume of malayalam he wrote and i quote i have been going through six volumes of malayalam grammar which have come previously from this work however i regret to say that except the work of guntert no other volume has benefited me at all unquote this declaration that a grammar book on malayalam created by a foreigner that too hailing from a language and terrain far from kerala comes as the definitive proof of guntert's genius as a linguist the introduction of punctuation marks into the malayalam language for the first time has also been attributed to guntert until then people usually wrote long sentences without any breaks but his defining work was to come in 1871 to 1872 Though Guntert wrote extensively in German, English, Malayalam and Tamil, certainly it was his oeuvre in Malayalam that could be described as the most towering and magnificent one. Of this itself, it is a universally acknowledged fact that it is the dictionary he created, a Malayalam and English dictionary, which is the jewel in the crown. ഞാൻ ആയിരത്തി തൊള്ളായിരത്തി എൺപത്തി ആറിൽ മദ്രാസ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയിൽ എം ഫിലിന് പഠിക്കുമ്പോൾ വൈകുന്നേരങ്ങളിൽ ഈ മൗണ്ട് റോഡിലൂടെ പഴയ പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ തേടി പോകുമായിരുന്നു അപ്പം വളരെ അന്നത്തെ സാമ്പത്തിക നിലയൊന്നും ഇന്നത്തെ പോലെ അത്ര ഭദ്രമല്ലായിരുന്നു അപ്പോൾ ചെറിയ തുകയ്ക്ക് ധാരാളം ആഴ്ചപ്പതിപ്പുകളും മാസികകളും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഈ പുസ്തകങ്ങളും ഒക്കെ കിട്ടുമായിരുന്നു അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ദിവസം ചെല്ലുമ്പോഴാണ് ഈ ഒരു വലിയ പുസ്തകം അത് ഒരു തമിഴനാണ് അയാൾക്ക് അതിൻ്റെ മൂല്യം അറിയത്തില്ല ആ പുസ്തകം വളരെ തുച്ഛമായിട്ടുള്ള എന്തോ ഒരു അഞ്ച് രൂപയ്ക്ക് താഴെയാണ് അന്ന് അത് എന്നോട് വാങ്ങിയത് അങ്ങനെയാണ് ആ പുസ്തകം കിട്ടുന്നത് വഴിയോര കച്ചവടക്കാരിൽ നിന്ന് മദ്രാസിലെ മൗണ്ട് റോഡിൽ നിന്നാണ് എനിക്ക് ഈ പുസ്തകം ലഭിക്കുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ അന്നത്തെയും ഇന്നത്തെയും ഒക്കെ വലിയ ഭാഷാശാസ്ത്രജ്ഞനായ കെ എം പ്രഭാകരവാരായിരുന്നു അവിടുത്തെ ഹെഡ് ഓഫ് ദ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് അപ്പോൾ സാറ് ഈ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് കൂടുതലായിട്ടും ഭാഷാശാസ്ത്രത്തിലും വ്യാകരണത്തിലും പണ്ഡിതനായതുകൊണ്ട് സാർ ആദ്യം മുതൽ തന്നെ ഈ നിഘണ്ടുക്കളെ പറ്റിയും അതുപോലെ തന്നെയുള്ള ഈ നമ്മുടെ ഭാഷാ ചരിത്രവുമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട കാര്യങ്ങൾ പറഞ്ഞു തരുമായിരുന്നു അപ്പോൾ എം എയ്ക്ക് പഠിക്കുന്ന കാലം മുതലേ കൊണ്ടിട്ടുണ്ടെന്ന് ഘടനയെ പറ്റി കേട്ടിട്ടുണ്ട് പക്ഷേ അല്ലേ ഈ പ്രഭാകരവാരി സാറിൻ്റെ ആ ഒരു വലിയ ആ നോളജിൽ നിന്ന് നമുക്കിതിൻ്റെ വാല്യൂ മനസ്സിലായി ഇന്നിപ്പോൾ ഏറ്റവും പ്രാധാന്യമായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ കാണുന്നത് ശ്രീകണ്ഠേശ്വരത്തിൻ്റെ ശബ്ദാരാവലിയാണ് പക്ഷേ അതിൽ പോലും പല പദങ്ങളും ഇല്ല ഈ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ഈ പ്രാചീന പദങ്ങൾ ആ പ്രാചീന രൂപത്തിൽ കാണുന്നില്ല പക്ഷേ ഇത് അങ്ങനെ വരുമ്പോൾ ഇന്നിപ്പം ഈ ക്ലാസ് ഈ സാഹിത്യ ക്ലാസ്സുകളിലൊക്കെ പോകുമ്പോൾ ഈ സാഹിത്യത്തിൽ പലപ്പോഴും ഈ പ്രാദേശികമായ പദങ്ങളൊക്കെ ഉപയോഗിക്കും അപ്പോൾ അവയുടെ അർത്ഥം കണ്ടെത്താനായിട്ട് നമുക്ക് വളരെ ഉപകാരമാണ് ഈ പുസ്തകം അന്ന് ലഭ്യമായിരുന്ന വാക്കുകളെല്ലാം അദ്ദേഹം സ്വീകരിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ അതിന് എനിക്കിത് വളരെ പ്രയോജനപ്പെട്ടിട്ടുണ്ട് പഴയ വാക്കുകൾ പിന്നെ പുതിയ വാക്കുകൾ വരുമ്പോഴും നമ്മൾ ഞാൻ ഇടയ്ക്കിടയ്ക്ക് നോക്കും ഇപ്പം തന്നെ ഈ ക്രിസ്തീയ മതവുമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടുകൊണ്ട് ഈ പാതിരി അച്ഛൻ ഇതിനൊന്നും പക്ഷേ അദ്ദേഹം ആ സമയത്ത് ആ ഒരു അർത്ഥം വന്നിട്ടില്ല അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെയുള്ളൊരു വ്യത്യാസമൊക്കെ നമുക്ക് ഇതിനകത്ത് നിന്ന് കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാൻ പറ്റും ചില പദങ്ങളുടെ വരവിനെ പറ്റിയൊക്കെ ഉള്ളത് ആ രീതിയിൽ നമുക്ക് താരതമ്യം ചെയ്ത് പഠിപ്പിക്കാൻ വളരെ ഉപകാരപ്രദമാണ് പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് പ്രാചീനമായിട്ടുള്ള പല പദങ്ങളുടെയും അർത്ഥം അതിൽ നിന്ന് കണ്ടെത്തിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിന് അദ്ദേഹം ഈ ദ്രാ ദ്രാവിഡ ഭാഷാശാസ്ത്രവും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ സംസ്കൃതത്തിൽ നിന്നുള്ള ആ ഭാഷയുടെ മലയാളത്തിലേക്കുള്ള വാക്കുകളുടെ വരവിനെ പറ്റിയൊക്കെ അതിൽ ആമുഖത്തിൽ തന്നെ പറയുന്നുണ്ട് എങ്കിലും പ്രാചീന പദങ്ങൾ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാനാണ് നമുക്ക് ഏറ്റവും അത് പ്രയോജനപ്പെടുന്നത് The striving for perfection shown by Guntert in his works could be easily gleaned from the fact that even after 18 years of the publication of his dictionary in 1872 he was in a never ending quest to expand the dictionary with more words The personal copy of the dictionary of Guntert now kept in Tubingen has several such words in its margins His notes referring to the words in early novels of Malayalam like Kundalata and Indulekha which were published just a few years before his death speak volumes regarding the dedication to the dictionary which he pursued one of the most important thing about his dictionary is that 
he, he gives you a kind of complete cross-reference to his words. Even later dictionaries fail in that regard. So Gundar Dictionary is good in the sense of giving you the history of Malayalam language, history of Kerala, as well as folkloristics, and then uh, it is complete in a way, it is self-explanatory in a way, because he never fails to give you cross-references to his words, meaning as well. Though missionary work was his main aim, Gundert possessed a passion for literature and language, especially Malayalam. He had more than 50 works to his credit. Illikunda has become an icon, our epitome of uh, Malayalam linguistic history, in the sense that from there only he started translating works, and there only he started operating, collecting entire folklore materials, and also all kinds of oral literature he had collected and he travelled all along the areas of the regions and uh, he collected all the scriptural traditions then available at that time. And all these materials he had utilised comfortably for uh, making a better dictionary as well as a better grammar. By the time he returned to Germany in April 1859, he had spent nearly two decades in Kerala. His severely declining health prompted Gundert to request for resignation from his duty. This was granted and in 1859 he returned to Germany, albeit with the hope of returning later on to Malabar, where he found his life's mission in more than one way. But continuing problems of health and the reluctance of authorities to send Gundert back to India made it a futile hope. His health got much worse in the later years and he was almost bedridden for some time. On the 27th of April 1893, he breathed his last. Some of the rare books in Malayalam language would have been lost if Hermann Guntert had not taken the trouble to transport them to his hometown, Kalf. The documents preserved by Guntert included nearly 80 manuscripts and 150 printed works. Some of the available palm leaf manuscripts run into 42,000 pages. These books have been archived in the Guntert archive of Tübingen University. He had the habit of collecting and documenting things. And when he went back to Germany, he, at that point of time, he had collected whatever materials he could get personally gathered from the entire region and also copied, scripted, you know, some people had a written, well written and hand over to him. So there were also written materials in the sense that copies. There was no scope of Xeroxing or scanning at that time. So the people scribes, he had uh, deputed scribes for that and uh, very good handwriting materials went there. So while speaking about some of the histories, we do not, we just heard about some books, say for example, Payanur Pata. It is so significant as far as evolution of Malayalam language is concerned, but we had never seen such a book. The Malayalam is a very important part of Malayalam. The Rama Jaritha is a very important part of the Rama Jaritha. The Rama Jaritha is a very important part of the Rama Jaritha. The Rama Jaritha is a very important part of Pada hari selesa, itu saudara Malaysia kerjanya itu baru itu payung orang patan. Pada hari jadu tadi le, 15 tahun jurur itu ada itu pustaka orang payung orang patan, payung orang begal itu pustam. Adik ibu ini Kerala itu ada kau lebih banyak lagi itu. Adik ibu ini pada hari tu orang beri gal, gundar itu, orang lelaki itu tu le, parah je itu le beri gal, matra beri itu, kami adu beri hari beri itu. Pache, doktor karya sa karya, air itu tulai itu empat ti ar le, berlin le, loga Malaysia sama ada boleh sebut. Albrecht Franzoi pergi pergi gayum, tubingan sarwala chale poyi gunter tende dokumen sakka kandu gayi. Agena kanda po, adil walras gayi tu payu dulu pata gayi duduk kandu, agul tarisai rey gayi duduk. Ii sangadi gale, ur microfilm cehi duduk tu gunto bandu, tarisai rey lajurus korcchu baga padarsi bici. Agena padarsi bici po, a padarsi bici sambandit cehi uru uru wisata mai uru matra warata gayan gurut. Gayan ala uru baru 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 kor gurut tene duduk tene dawa. Apa antara terlalu asalnya itu orang ini, ibu dah alam korup putih, gunter terlekor cila putih orang abang-abang terlekor. 
The third World Malayalam Conference, named after Guntert, held in Berlin in 1986, could be safely described as the starting point of this great revival of interest in the legacy of the man, both in Germany and in Kerala. Dr. Skaria Sakaria, a Malayalam scholar from Kerala, led the massive, painstaking efforts of research into his life and works. Dr. Sakaria, living in Germany for a number of years and delving into the till then unopened archives of vast collections of Gunther's books, manuscripts, records, etc., came out into the open and began to be published. In fact, a veritable feast of Gunther or a festival of Gunther was beginning. February <laughs> Herman Gunther in the bicentenary celebration of the Bandit, Illikun the Bangla village, Malayal Sarvasa at Abukitle, Uri Seminar Narno. A seminar le Prathana Petta Uru Charcha Visham. Herman Gunther in the Pale Luru Chair to be a Rican Lion. Herman Gunther in a doctorate in the Vichitla Sarogala Salana, Tubingen Sarogala Sala, Germany. Pangan at the time of linguistics scenario, when you look at the way in which he approached language context by centralizing the people instead of the scripts. So the orality and the script cultures he had integrated. And that's the reason he followed a, almost a 20th century linguistics at the very time when he was in 19th century over here. So this traditional uh, contribution that made him ever shining linguist as far as the world is concerned. And in Malayalam context, he is the visionary, rather actually as scholarly outputs are still valued. The role which Dr. Hermann Gunther set out to play in life was that of a Christian missionary. All his actions were manifestations of that role. However, destiny sometimes chooses certain persons in history to play great roles, even if they themselves are not aware of it. Gunther was such a man of destiny. History now marks Dr. Hermann Gunther as a unique man of letters, who will be celebrated forever as the great champion of a language far away from his native land. <laughs>